How's it going, Twitch? My name is Skull, and on behalf of East Asia Soft, welcome to today's stream. Today, I am playing a game called Raptor Boyfriend, a high school romance coming to consoles this week. So this will be coming out on Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch, and I am playing the Switch version. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, let's go ahead and just hop straight into it. I am playing on my Switch for the first time in quite some time, so this is exciting. Please. There we go. All right. <laughs> so this is a labeled as a satirical graphic adventure. Raptor boyfriend. Hmm. You know, I can't say I've ever thought about wanting a Raptor boyfriend, but here we go. Rattle like a games, huh? They made some great stuff. Rocket Adrift. Ooh, it's a floppy disk. Hey, look, they 3D printed the save icon. Could probably turn the volume down a little. Right back to where I had it in the first place. Check out the options. Um, looks good to me. Okay, let's go ahead and start. <clears throat> so you can't see, but it says, uh, the person talking right now is Stella. It's been a while since our last appointment, hasn't it, Doc? Well, I'm not gonna lie. A lot's changed. I know it's kind of a cliche, but my life didn't really start until last year. It didn't start until me and my dad moved to Ladle. Ladle. Ladle, Ladle, Ladle. That's a funny word. Ladle. This magical small town in the middle of nowhere, Ontario. I dreamed of moving here for so long. Ever since I was a kid, I'd come to visit Grandma and go to the local camp. It was a, like a fantastical adventure every summer. Going back home to the lousy city felt like someone shaking me away from an amazing dream. But this time, it was different. This time, Ladle was going to be my home. I just wish... I wish the reason we moved here wasn't wasn't because Grandma had passed on. We used to be so close. But then right before high school, me and Dad stopped coming to Ladle because... We get to pick the reason? Hmm. <clears throat> we moved so far away that coming to Ladle wouldn't... would have been a two-day trip. And with Dad working all the time, we just never made it up here. We still talked to Grandma on the phone every once in a while, but it wasn't the same. I think Dad felt really bad about not seeing her again. It took a while for it to sink in for me. In movies, when people die, it's always so dramatic and meaningful. But other than the funeral and sadness, a lot of what you have to deal with really is a lot of paperwork. We came up here because despite all that had happened, Grandma left Dad everything. That included her house. So we moved in. I know, talk about bittersweet, right? Back then, when we first moved in, I didn't know how to feel. Dad told me that Grandma would have enjoyed, wanted me to enjoy my senior year. And so, that's what I set out to do. I had a lot going for me. Dad let me have Grandma's old truck. I was going to a new school where I could make a good first impression, and I was in ladle. 
Now, I know that I haven't been great at meeting new people. I usually liked to keep to myself. It was like totally by choice, though. Aw, teddy bear. Come on, Doc, don't look at me like that. Ah, <sighs> fine. It wasn't by choice. I was a dweeb. A big, fat dweebus with an L practically tattooed on my forehead. Is that what you want to hear? You're right. That wasn't fair. It's just... I'm still a bit sore about it. I guess I just had trouble making friends because... I was just teased a lot. It's hard to have the confidence to make new friends when you know other people think you're uncool. Not to mention, it was like other kids were afraid they'd catch the loser disease from me or something. So yeah, Doc. I hadn't really had the best luck before, but... On that day, September 15th, 1997... Specific? The planets must have aligned in some way that changed everything. Let me tell you about my first day at Ladle High. September 1997, I was in kindergarten. Why, uh, why is her hair a different color? <laughs> a Rocket Adrift Game by Pat, Lindsay, and Titus. Music's kind of catchy. <laughs> I was on the way to Ladle High, trying desperately not to freak out about the horrifying prospect of starting a new high school during senior, senior year. Yeah. It's gonna be fine. Ladle's different from most places. What's the worst that can happen? I get shamed, kicked out of school, and regret my actions for the rest of my life. My comforting words weren't enough to calm me down, weirdly. I need a game plan. And a goal. Yes, that's it. I knew I was already under a lot of pressure. So I made a goal that felt very reasonable. I'm going to be the coolest girl in the school. On the first day. Everyone will be like, you, Stella Starosta, are the coolest girl in Ladle High. It seems pretty doable. Game plan time. All I have to do is, I only just gotta, here's how I'm going to do it. I'll make myself into... Hmm. I'll make myself into a sex symbol. I'll like exude confidence in my body and say things like, hey stud. I'll be wicked good at flirting and talking about sexual things. Good luck with that lady. I might draw the ire of prudes, but like whose face will be iconic through the decades? Mine, not theirs. With a solid plan in place, I started getting closer to school. Then it hit me. What if I run into Taylor? I didn't know how to feel about that. Wonder who Taylor is. Oh, perfect. Taylor was my camp friend. I hadn't seen him since I was 13. We used to write to each other in between summers. I remember being so excited every time I got one of his letters. It was like I was just a little bit closer to being in Ladle. Hi Jesus, how are you doing? Excellent Santa emote. Then the year I stopped going to camp, I also stopped writing. I don't know why, maybe it was because Clearly, maybe it was because I had feelings for him, but didn't know how to deal with them. Like, I don't know. 
I was 13. I was a naive kid with a crush, and I guess I was scared that if I kept riding him, I'd tell him. And that he'd be, like, freaked out or something. I knew I had to focus, though. Whether I ran into Taylor or not, first things first, I needed to become a sex symbol. Good luck with that. Episode 1. Welcome to Ladle. After going to the office to get registered, I went to go find my locker. I was supposed to meet a class representative who was going to show me around Ladle High. They said they would meet me by my locker. I guess this is it. It had something leaking out of it. Yep, that's the locker I would get. Well, might as well put my stuff in there. Oh, God! This locker smells like death. The smell was so potent that it made my eyes water. Uh, I can feel it. It's so dense, like a, a stench blanket. I had to find the source before I fainted. Mm, that gym sock! It seems to be the center of the stink zone. Ew! So gross! The smell of the gross gym sock was creeping into the hallway. People were starting to notice. I'm like... I'm like going to throw up! Where is that coming from? This is so embarrassing. I don't want to be known as the smelly girl at school. I had to do something. This was my chance to establish myself as a sex symbol. Oh, oh dear. Is that a, a little old me? I mean, no, it's not. I'm, uh, I only use the finest of perfumes and oils and um, lotions and stuff. I rub them on my body. I was losing them. Watch out! I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a velociraptor on a skateboard? Whoa. That dinosaur boy looked so cool. The way his feather crest flowed as he cut through the air. His powerful dinosaur legs and sharp claws. Such balance and grace. But what did he want with me? All right, everyone. This has been a... I get to pick for both of them. A, a prank? Exactly! Another elaborate prank from me, the Prank Tour! And I'd like to thank uh, the, the new girl here for playing along and drawing attention to the stink. You're welcome. That's right, she was in on it from the beginning. The crowd slowly moved on, and it was just me standing face to face with a raptor which is a really hard sentence for me to say with a straight face. Okay, I think we pulled that off. You, you're a... Yeah? You're a dinosaur. You know it. How's that possible? What can I say? I do the impossible. Look, I know it's a lot to take in. Yes, I am a skateboarding Velociraptor. No, I'm not here to eat you. 
I'm actually pretty partial to pizza, spaghetti, and small amphibians. Not some pretty new girl at school. Oh. Nice cover back there. So, what is that smell anyway? Some total jerk left their grody sock in my locker. Grody? Total jerk? I don't know if it was someone's idea of a joke or if they were just really gross. Maybe. Like, theoretically, the joke is actually pretty funny if you think about it for a little while. What? Oh, okay, look, I put the stinky sock in your locker. I did it as a prank. I thought it would break the ice. Make you feel at home here. It worked sup- I worked super hard on it. Oh. Wait. I get it now. A stinky sock in my locker. And I didn't know it was there. You don't have to do this. I know the prank sucked. No, no, it was good. I appreciate you trying to make me feel better. This is a pretty bad way to start your first day here at Ladle, huh? Yeah, it's not really going how I planned it. You deserve a better prank than this. Anyways, my name is Robert Rapterson. Who are you? I thought this should be easy. Just tell him your name. It's New Girl, or at least that's my stage name. That was a joke. Because you called me New Girl before when. Uh. Never mind. It's. St. St. st uh, I'm Strella. <sighs> yep. I mean. It was my first real conversation with a cute boy, and I was already messing it up. Just called the raptor cute? Hopeless. Strella. Cool. No, sorry, it's, uh... Never mind. I was, uh... I'm supposed to meet the class representative to show me around the school. I guess they forgot. Nope, that's me. Class representative. Really? Sure. Who better to show you around than me? I am very representative of what the school has to offer. Right. And my family has lived in Ladle for generations. You might have heard of us. The Raptorsons. I actually vaguely remember hearing about the Raptorsons when I came to Ladle. I recognize that name, I just... Didn't think we were actually Raptors. Yeah. I get it. Even with all the bizarre shit in Ladle, we tend to stand out. Are there other dinosaurs like... like you? There's no dino like me, that's for sure. But if you mean talking dinosaurs who are just chillin', then yeah. Not in Ladle, though. Wow. Anyways, I'm supposed to show you the gym, the library, and the soccer field. But the gym has a black mold problem, and the library is... a library. And the soccer field is just a muddy hole since our groundskeeper disappeared. D disappeared Some people believe he was a victim of the Ladle Ripper. Who? Oh, just a serial murderer that lives in the woods and butchers people with an axe. Most people think he's just a legend made up by the superstitious town folk. But I think he's real. Let's let that simmer on the back burner for now. Let me show you the true pride and joy of Ladle High. <laughs> the, the deep tone there, that was funny. I was ready for the big tour of the school, but Robert just took me down the hall. So, what do you think? 
It's a nice display case. No, not the display case. What's inside it? These are the greatest achievements of Ladle High. Notice anything about them? One of them is a key item, are you kidding me? <laughs> One of them is an important item that I need to collect and combine with something else to solve a puzzle? What? No. This isn't about finding some hidden clue. It's about admiring my achievements. Check out all the snowboarding championships. Notice anything about them? Hmm? That's right, I won them all. You skateboard and snowboard? I'm a bit of a board savant. Well, I don't really compete anymore. How about you? You ever win any trophies or medals? Nah, I never really competed to begin with. The, on the only thing I was ever good at was history class. And they don't really hand out trophies for... Knowing a lot about the inventor of toilets, correcting people about Viking helmets, being a fangirl for the Middle Ages. We're getting a whole lot of, uh, <laughs> a whole lot of choices, wow. I wonder how many of these affect the ending. Being a fangirl for the Middle Ages. That's cool, I guess. Believe me, it's not. <laughs> hey, what are you doing after school? Uh... To really complete your tour, I have to show you the lake. The lake? Yeah, you gotta see the lake if you want to know the real ladle. Okay... I'm actually... Well, the thing is, I am not actually new to Ladle. Don't accept my invitation so lightly. The lake is a challenge. A test. Of what? Nothing. Just your worthiness. Um... Okay, you look worried. It's actually going to be pretty chill. Oh, okay. But also, be prepared and stuff. Oh, okay. And if you run into anybody cool, bring them along. I'm trying to get as many people to come as I can. T totally. Anyways, here's my number. I hope to see you there, because I want to know if you are worthy. Uh... Stell you later, Smella. I mean, sorry, it's Strella, right? Actually, it's Stella. Oh, right. Okay, cool. Gave her his number in the year 1997. I guess that's the landline for his house? That was how I met Robert. I was still thrown off by him giving me his number. That had never happened before. Then he asked me to hang out after school. I didn't know if it was a date, another prank, or just a friendly invitation. I didn't even know where the lake was. There are lakes all over Ladle. Which lake was the lake? I thought that after that, the rest of the school day would be pretty uneventful. But the weirdness was not even over yet. After failing to convince the fashion club that fanny packs are sexy, I headed back to my locker. I think I've pretty much contained the stink. I'll just have to keep this locker closed, uh, pretty much for all time. Where were you this morning? Well, I was a little late. And what about last night? I was unpacking. I mean, come on! Okay, that's not true. I said I would unpack, but I ended up walking around behind my grandma's house. We were supposed to hang out! What? This is how it always is, isn't it? You come and go wherever you want. Uh... If you want something from me, then you are around. 
but if you want something from you, if I want something from you, you just vanish like you always do. You don't know what this is supposed to be. Sometimes you are right there being all nice and it's like you and I... Stinky insects, if you can. <laughs> also, hi, uh, Nuru. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Nuru Poga. We are a real thing, and other times it's like, you don't even exist. Yep, she's gone again. Um, excuse me? Whoa, uh, sorry. I didn't see you there. Whoa. Who was this girl? She was so cool and absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Were those wings? And antennae? Was she some sort of magic fairy? Raptors and fairies, just a normal, typical day in Ontario. Apparently. I've never actually been to Ontario, but based off of my uh, 30 minutes of playing this game, I now know everything about it. They got raptors and fairies. Are you okay? What? Huh? You said excuse me and then wow? Then you just stood there staring at me for like at least two minutes. I was just wondering if you were talking to me. Oh shit, you heard that? Yeah. I was sorry. I was fighting with Ingrid. <laughs> Is Ingrid real? Is this lady okay? Is she invisible? Um, yeah. Hello, Ingrid. It's a pleasure to meet you. Who are you talking to? Um, your friend, Ingrid? She's gone. Wait, you must be the new girl. Yeah, kinda. Wow, I'm making a great first impression then. Like, hey, how about I yell in the halls at an invisible person for a while? <sighs> My name is Day. I guess you probably noticed by now that I'm a, well, I'm a, a fae, a fairy, a beautiful. A beautiful... Huh? I mean, sorry. What were you saying? I'm a fairy. This must be a lot for you to take in. It has been kind of, uh, an intense day. You're actually one of the few people who's, like, stopped to talk to me. Damn. I've never had it to change schools before, and I'm still a loser. Oh, I I didn't mean that you're a loser. I just Wait, you can't be a loser. You're cool. You're the only one who seems to think so. I guess that's what happens when you spend all your time studying instead of I, I don't know, talking to people. And it probably didn't help that my mom was a teacher at my elementary school. Or that I wore a superhero cape until I was eight. I mean... I sneezed in my fifth grade teacher's face. I used to say everything I wrote out loud. I thought I literally had two left feet. I used to say everything I wrote out loud. So like, homework assignments, read The Outsiders. Yeah, I wasn't well liked. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, I didn't catch your name. Oh, it's Stella. I nailed it that time. I couldn't believe it either, because at the time I was so distracted by her wings. 
Okay, Stella, I, uh, I notice you're a bit distracted by my wings. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, I, it's okay. Look, if it helps, you can ask me some questions. Really? Yeah, for sure. Why aren't you tiny? Do you have magic powers? Can you fly? Why aren't you tiny? Wait, that came out wrong. Ha <laughs> ha! Why aren't I tiny? I'm sorry. No, it's cool. I get it. Most fairies you see in movies and stuff are small, so... Yeah. Why aren't I tiny? I honestly don't know how to answer that other than to say the movies are lies. Sorry, all this cryptid stuff is still is just kind of normal to me. I've lived here all my life. I uh, used to go to camp here, but living here is like different. Yeah, you'll probably see some more locals if you know what I mean. Ontario's weird, yo. Like me and Ingrid. Oh, right. Yeah, I've already met a skateboarding dinosaur. Ah, Robert. Yeah, he actually... I remembered Robert telling me to bring any cool people I run into and... Well, I thought Dave was cool, so that was good enough for me. He asked me to come to the lake. He did? Yeah, and he said to bring along anyone cool that I run into, so... So... Do you want to come with me? Me? Go to the lake? You don't have to if you don't... No, no, it's just... Did he say anything about it? He just said something about... Something about it being chill. That's suspicious. Robert is not a chill dude. Oh. I don't know. I've never gone there before. I mean, I've gone there, but I've never hung out there. It's a school night, and I've never gone there, and... Is it gonna be like a party? I don't know. It could be like five people, or it could be a total rager. Five people is still a party. Right? No, that's more like a get-together or a chill sesh. Chill sesh? We shouldn't go, maybe. No, actually, we should go. It'll be good for us. Because you're the new girl, and I'm a total brain. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not, though. What? No, no, you're right. Let's go. Okay. We just gotta get hyped. Let's do this thing. We're going to the lake. Yeah, we are. The thing is, though, I don't know where it is, really. Oh, right. Could you, um, tell me? You know there is an Ontario in California? People often confuse Ontario, Canada. <laughs> well, um, I think considering they're in a town called Ladle, which they said is in Ontario, I, I get the feeling that there's probably not a town called Ladle inside of the town Ontario in California. That's my logic and I'm sticking with it. Or like, draw a map. Hey, why don't I show you? You have a car? Yes. <clears throat> Wait, no. So which is it? It's more like a truck. Great, so you can give me a ride. Totally. Awesome. Okay, here's my number. If you're nervous about the lake, give me a call. Or, you know, if you just want to talk about anything or whatever. So, you just legitimately want to talk to me? Yeah. This was the second person to just give me their number like it was no big deal or something. Pick me up around seven. Okay. Awesome. One sec though. Hey, guess what? Me and... 
what's her name again? Stella. Me and Stella are going to the lake together. Did you hear that? I know you're still around here somewhere. I guess she's gone. <laughs> I'd never been invited to anything before in my life. Not only had a hot dinosaur, a hot dinosaur, invited me to the lake, but I was giving a hot fay a ride there, fay, a ride there too. I was standing there by my locker, looking at the two scraps of phone numbers in disbelief. I didn't know whether to be excited or terrified. Then someone came along to clear that up for me. Wow. Why are you just standing around with that ridiculous grin on your face? I don't know if this is a man or a woman, so I don't know what voice to give them yet. Huh? You're a ghost! That's friggin' right, I'm a ghost. Oh, good lord. Okay. Does that scare you? <laughs> Please don't haunt me! I'll do anything! If you were at my mercy, it'd be friggin' bad. I understand if you can't handle it. It's pretty friggin' intense. Trapped between this world and the next. Doomed to wonder in everlasting torment and... stuff. I'm like a tragic spirit. And sometimes... a vengeful one. I don't know if I should keep up with that voice for her, but she is a ghost. It's like way more than some people can handle, okay? I like don't even know how I died. Were you murdered by the ladle ripper? Yeah, I, I mean, maybe. However I died, it was like probably really violent and tragic. Really friggin' tragic, okay? Okay. And, like, Day is the only one smart enough to figure it out because it's such a friggin', like, mystery. I'm not, like, mad that she's gonna go to the lake with you because, like, when you're a spectral entity trapped in between death and the mortal coil, then, like, jealousy and stuff is kind of beneath you. I'm just telling you to watch out, okay? Sure. Just be careful. Because, like, as a ghost, I could do all sorts of stuff. Like, walk through walls and be invisible. But that's not even the half of it. Sometimes, I get all poltergeist and stuff. Like, throwing friggin' furniture and smashing mirrors and, like, knives. And I'll even set your clocks five minutes late. Or early. <gasps> And don't even blame me if that happens, because, like, I can't even control it. And that's not, like, a threat or anything. It's just, like, if you're gonna be around day, then I might be around. And I just want you to know that you're getting in what you're getting into. So, like, yeah, maybe I'll see you at the lake. It'll be fun. Yeah, fun. Okay. I was on my way home, still very confused about everything that just happened. I can't believe how wild that first day was. I mean, people talked to me. Wicked cool people. And the plan... God, this morning when I made that plan I had no idea that it would work so flawlessly! Okay, so maybe not totally flawlessly in execution, but I've got time to really perfect my strategy. By the time I get to the lake, I'll have it mastered. That's when it all hit me. I'm going to some kind of party with people that I just met. I might have fooled them into thinking that I'm cool for like five minutes, but now, oh, who knows how long we'll be at the lake. I have to go. They're expecting me. I was so afraid of the idea that I'd get there and blank or embarrass myself somehow. 
I started having a mini panic attack on the car ride home. Uh... Okay, Stella. Gotta think of something else. Gotta calm down. Look into the rearview mirror. That always works. They say you should be checking your rearview mirror every like 30 seconds or something. But for like quick bursts. I'm more into checking every three minutes or so. But I give it a good stare. It helps me calm down. I sometimes get lost in it. I like seeing the road be put behind me. It's oddly therapeutic. Goodbye, old road. Sorry for driving on you. Maybe this time I looked for a bit too long. Holy! What am I playing here? Taylor? <clears throat> Stella? I couldn't believe it. I'd hit him! I'd hit my old camp friend, Taylor Talto! I was in shock. I mean, I knew I'd probably see him around at some point, but not like that. There was a million things I probably should have been thinking about, like how to explain why I stopped writing to him, what was he doing out here, why wasn't he at school, but all I could think of was about how much he had changed. Hey. He was always tall, but now he has grown, like, a lot. He wasn't the skinny boy I remembered. He was something else now. I found myself looking deep into his piercing blue eyes. I could feel a mysterious sadness in them. Uh, Stella. Uh, oh, sorry! Are you sure you don't need to go to the hospital or something? Yeah, no, I'm good. Just a bruised shoulder. I just need to chill for a second. Taylor, I'm so sorry for hitting you with my truck. I had a lot on my mind. I wasn't watching the road. I feel awful about this. Forget it. Let's not make it a big deal. Look, if it makes you feel any better, I get hit by trucks all the time. How is that supposed to make me feel better? Sorry, it just kind of comes with the territory of being a Bigfoot and everything. We're too stealthy for our own good. Taylor always had a pretty good sense of humor when it came to being a Bigfoot. When I first met him and his family at their camp, I was like five years old. I was just so excited that magical creatures like him existed. I'd go home and tell everyone about how my best friend at summer camp was a Bigfoot boy my age. Maybe that was the start of people thinking I was bizarre. Maybe? Okay, you can stop lying now. No, really. I even developed a pretty effective technique. The trick is to hop up at the last second and really put your shoulder into it. It helps to be the tall, though. That way you have a high center of gravity and can make it over the front grill. Are you being serious? If anything, you were actually in more danger than I was. The last couple of times someone hit me with a truck, I ended up going right through the glass. What? I made it through, like, three to fatal accidents. I turned the driver's bodies into mulch, hide the evidence, and it's good for the local ferns. Taylor, you did not. True story. Uh huh. So I'm standing next to someone who's hidden several bodies. So, yeah, you're totally making this up to make me feel better. Maybe I am. Is it working? 
Well, when I was hoping... When I was hoping I'd run into my friend from camp, I didn't mean literally. You know, like, with my truck. Well, at least I know where we are still friends. Taylor... You kind of moved away to the city, and I stopped hearing from you, and... Well, I kind of thought... Taylor, I'm sorry. It's just... I... Taylor, I... It's just that... The words just weren't coming. Stella, it's okay. It's just... Well, it's just good to see you again. Yeah, it's good to see you again, too. So... Well, I gotta go. Wait, so soon? Hey, now that you're back in town, we'll probably see each other around. If not, maybe you'll run into me in another four years. Wait, Taylor! I couldn't let him leave so soon. Not like that. Will you come to the lake with me? Stella, I'm... Wait, did you say the lake? Yeah. Are you sure you meant the lake? And not, like, a lake? The lake, I think. A raptor named Robert asked me if I wanted to go. That was weird. Robert Raptorson? Yeah. Weird. And I'm supposed to pick up a fey girl named Day on the way there. Huh. What? Stella, what do you think happens at the lake? I don't know. Can I be totally honest with you? Please. I have no idea. I've never been invited to anything, and I have so many questions. Do I need to RSVP? Should I dress casual, semi-formal, or formal? Should I bring a present? Maybe some kind of cheese? Is there a secret handshake? Help me, Taylor. I don't know anything. Look, the lake is just a place where burnouts and losers hang out, drink, and smoke weed. Like a wild 24-7 party? No, more like five or six people sitting around talking about bullshit. Oh. Yeah, it's not really Robert or Day's scene. It's kind of throwing me off. What do you mean? Well, Robert usually hangs out with his jock friends in the parking lot of the Loveland Frog's Diner. And Day's just, well, she doesn't really hang out. I always figured she was too busy studying and doing shit for extra credit. That's if Ingrid isn't hovering over her. Oh. And speaking of people who've seen, this is most definitely not. Are you sure you're ready for this, Stella? This is bad. I can't go through with this. Who am I kidding? I got a toy horse on my dashboard, for God's sake. I'm not ready for this. They're gonna take one look at me and be like, This girl has a nightlight in her room. We can't be friends with her. Stella, relax. I've been to these things before. You'll be fine. You've been to the lake before? Yes. Hmm. What? Nothing. Oh, no. Let's guilt him in. Oh, let's trick him into it. Let's have some fun. And I just had a wild idea. What is it? What if you... Go on. What if you came to the lake? I don't want to go to the lake. Right, right, right. I totally get you. So, what if instead of going to the lake... Yes. What if you weren't at the lake, right? I won't be. But what if you were beside the lake? What? 
It's like you are far enough away from the lake that if anyone was looking at you, they say, he's not at the lake. But you were close enough to the lake that you could just look over and, like, check up on me. So, let me get this straight. You are over at the lake, and I'm by myself, just hanging out near the lake. Yeah, you didn't go to the lake like you wanted, but you just happened to be in shouting distance if anything goes wrong. That's not stopping. There we go. Have to press the A button. Sounds really complicated, Stella. Yeah, you're right. I don't want to just stand there by myself near the lake while everyone else is at the lake. So what you're saying is between those two options, the only two options, you'd rather be at the lake. That's not at all what I said. Taylor, if you want to come with me to the lake, you could just ask. You don't have to try to trick me into inviting you to the lake. <laughs> I'm happy to take you to the lake. Fine. Thanks, Taylor. I promise we won't stay too long. It really means a lot having you there. Will you need a ride? No, it's okay. I know where it is. Here, you can reach me here. I if you need me. That was three numbers at that point. I remember thinking, does everyone in Ladle just hand out their numbers like this? Oh, thanks. Okay. Look at that TV! <laughs> After school was finally over, I was sitting watching TV, but really out of the corner of my eye, I was watching the flashing light of the answering machine. I was nervous to find out if there were any messages for me on there. Let's check the note first. Hope you have a good day at school. I'll be as late as usual. Maybe we can pack up grandma's stuff when I get home. So let's check the messages. Message one. Hello, Mr. Starosa. This is Ian. We're looking for someone to pull a late shift at the observatory tonight. Click. Message two. Hey. It's Taylor. I'll see you later. So I guess this call is kind of pointless. Um, I'm going to go now. Click. Message three. Hey Stella, it's me, Day. I know you were kind of nervous about going to the lake. If you want to talk or something before we go, you can call me. If not, I'll see you when we, when you pick me up, okay? Bye. Click. Message four. Stella, it's Robert. I'm holed up in my house. The Dino Secret Service are here and I think they're about to kick in my door. Oh no, Stella, I need your help. Please call me. All right, sweet. So, like, call me or I'll see you at the lake later. <laughs> Just realized I gave Robert, like, a Duffman voice. Robert is here to get arrested by the Secret Service. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, here they come. I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory. You'll never take me alive. Click. I couldn't believe it. Taylor Day and Robert all called me. I knew this call would be too important to risk my dad walking in on, so I had to take the call on my own private line upstairs in my room. Okay. I guess we go upstairs? Kind of cool that we got so many options of things to do. My desk was covered with things when I first moved in. It took me a week or so to organize it with my important documents. Between homework, dinner, and getting ready for the lake, I knew I only had a few precious minutes to make the call. So, that meant I could only call one person. Also, I knew that after this phone call, I'd be flying so high from the majorness of it. I need a full hour to come back down to Earth, and I wouldn't be able to do anything else. Was I really ready to make the call? Whew. 
Anyone watching? Type in chat who we're supposed to call. Taylor, Richard, or... Robert, not Richard, or Day. I'm leaning more towards Robert myself. Robert or Day. <clears throat> mm, let's go with Robert. <clears throat> Hello! You reached the residence of the late, great Robert Rap Raptorson. Unfortunately, earlier today, he died in a gunfight with the Dino Secret Service. Oh no! His only crime was being too awesome for this world. Robert? I told you, he's gone. He didn't go quietly, though. He put up a really amazing fight. He did all sorts of sick gun moves like jumping in slow motion and shooting two guns at once. They had to shoot him like a hundred times. And even though he was bleeding out, he still gave an emotional dying speech. <laughs> what did he say? <clears throat> he said, Remember the Goofy Naval. The what? The Goofy Naval. It was his most impressive skateboard stunt. As a dinosaur, his legacy was important to him. So he wanted people to remember him doing what he loved. Which was skateboard stunts. <laughs> That's so sad. He was so young. And good looking. Did he have any regrets? Yeah, he said he met a girl at school today. He said, I really hope I don't die today in some sort of gunfight because I really want to get to know this girl I just met. We could only hope that he faked his death. He's done that before, you know. Some people say he's immortal. Robert, about this whole worthy thing. Stella, Stella, Stella. You know what makes life worth living. Anticipation and surprise. I'm more into safety and routine. Come on, being comfortable is fine for a while, but it gets boring. Everyone needs a little adventure in their lives. Okay. See you at the lake. I thought you were dead. Ha <laughs> ha! Pranked you! I'm not! See ya tonight! Bye. What a weird conversation that was. After the phone call, I went to pick up Day and we headed to the lake together. Who's this girl? Who is that? That's not the ghost. I was feeling okay on the car ride over, but then as soon as we got there, I was so nervous. I had to pull Day aside. There's so many people here. There's like five people here. I know, right? So many. I've never been to a party before. If this is a party, it's the saddest little party in history. But they're drinking... Underage! We could get arrested! There's like only one cop in town and he used to hang out here after work to get drunk right up until he got his girlfriend pregnant. So, yeah, you're not gonna get busted. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that one guy is definitely smoking pot. Pot? Cool. Yeah, I've totally done that. Really? For sure. Cool. Uh, me too. Really? Totally. I love to smoke all the weed. Yeah, it's so fun when you breathe it in through the doobie and you're just like... Hi. So hi. Right. And then you get all weird and uh trippy cuz you can't see cuz of all the smoke. Sure. 
That's why you fall over and stuff. Yeah. You haven't done it. Not even a little. Okay, thank God. Me neither. And I don't really feel like trying it here. Me neither. Okay, cool. So I won't be the only dweeb not getting high. I still don't buy it that you're a dweeb, even if you haven't smoked pot. Well, it's true. I just feel like I spent the first three years of high school watching everyone else have fun. When everyone else was out partying and skipping class, I was just doing my own thing, I guess. What is your thing? Honestly, all I really do is study and occasionally draw nothing comics and stuff. Wow, you know how to draw? That's pretty cool. Nah, can I see it sometime? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <clears throat> uh, anyways, why don't we go say hi to everyone? Okay, there's a girl and a guy. Hey, everyone! And she has arrived! We've got the new girl Stella here with... Whoa. Is that day, or do my raptor eyes deceive me? Yeah, it's me. Red! Hi, everybody. I felt like everyone was expecting me to say something. So I tried to introduce myself. I'm Stella. I, um... Uh... I was freezing up badly. It was like my worst nightmare, but it was real. I felt like everyone's eyes were burning through me, seeing me for what I really was. A loser. I had to try again though. I still had a chance. Say something, say anything, anything at all. Yes? <laughs> oh, choke! He was right. I was totally choking. I was just like every other time I had to meet new people. I'd get so worried that I was going to say something uncool. That when I'd actually try to say something, I'd have nothing to say because I was too busy thinking about how I'd sound super uncool. All I could think was, no, 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 not again. Not in front of the coolest people in Ladle. Hey, everyone, remember that one time I did a keg stand for a solid two minutes? Ah, uh, how could I forget? Dude, you were like blackout. It was pretty weak. Not even. I was still killing it for like hours. I know, because afterwards we broke into the ladle community rec pool and I remember totally jackknifing off a high board. That's so not what happened. We got as far as the fence and you passed out on the deck. Stacy and I had to drag you back home. Oh man, yeah, uh, I guess that's what happened. Wow, that sounds really wild. Yeah, like bat shit. Ugh. I don't know what I would have done without Robert then. Probably run into the woods in embarrassment. So, Stella, consider your tour officially over. I hope you enjoyed it. What? On behalf of the student body of Ladle High, I would like to say, welcome to Ladle. Oh yeah! Thanks. Um, does every tour of the school end in a party like this? Stella, remember, we talked about this. You need at least 10 people for it to qualify as a party. I don't know. This feels pretty party-like to me. That's because you've never been to. Time froze for a second. I had to stop Taylor from telling everyone that I'd never been to a real party before. Too high to tell the difference before. Like I am now. I'm totally ripped up. Mm. 
Nice. Listen, sorry everybody. I tried to get as many people here as I could, but well, they flaked or something. They bailed on you, man. Ouch, it hurts. But I respect your honesty, dude. You asked them to come to the lake. Did you really expect them to come here when you know it's not their spot? I thought I still had some sway over the team, but I still don't understand why you wanted to come here. I just wanted to change it up, I guess. Well, it looks like your friends didn't. Okay, this has all been fairly painful conversation, but where are my manners? Stella, this is Jessica, my partner in crime. Partner in crime? Really, Robert? And my good friend, your dealer. My buddy, Brandon. <coughs> I cannot hold those voices for too long, good lord. Ugh. He's Ladle's best purveyor of illicit substances. It wouldn't be a knot party without him giving up his ganja and his mom's homemade beer. Selling my ganja. You still owe me money, by the way, man. You need anything, let him know. For money. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, though. And it seems like you already know Taylor. But... Did you know that Brandon and Taylor are in a band together? What? Really? That's so cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I play drums and Taylor plays guitar and gets beast mode on the vocals. You sing? Taylor, why didn't you tell me you were in a band? Taylor? I'm out. What? Yeah, I'm going to take off. Taylor, wait! Boy, that got awkward. Wait, wait, where are you going? I'm just gonna take off. But why? Look, you don't need me here. Yes, I do. Taylor, what's really going on? I'm not good at being the center of attention. What? What do you mean? You're in a band! You must have been on stage before. We've never played live. Oh. Well, if you ever won an audience of one, I'd love to hear you play. I promise I won't boo. You wouldn't like it. It's really grungy. Taylor, I need you here. Okay, I guess I'll stick around a little longer. Bigfoot is emo, who would have guessed? Hey! There you guys are! Everything okay? Yeah. Good! Come on, Stella! Beer time! Oh yeah! <laughs> Duffman is coming here with some beer! <laughs> Sorry. That was the wrong button. I can save the game, right? Let me go ahead and try right now. Let's do that right there. Okay, perfect. What? Let's get you a beer! Taylor, don't leave without me, okay? No promises. Taylor! <clears throat> Man, last time I had this homebrew, I was annihilated! Annihilated? I was so hungover, I barely made it into practice the next day! Coach was pissed! He was all, Robert, if I hear about you getting drunk while you're on my team, I'll blah blah and blah you off the team, so blah blah blah! Wow. Sounds pretty serious. Yeah! That's not a problem anymore, though. Why? What happened? I've just moved on to other things. You know, pranks, poetry, skateboarding. Cool shit like that. Did you say poetry? Oh, did I? I, I mean, it, it's just a hobby. I don't take it as seriously as skateboarding. 
that's where I get really expressive with some sick stunts. Oh, like your favorite stunt. The goofy navel. We got a poem. Top. The goofy navel. You know it. I pretty much invented that stunt. As far as I know, I'm like the only one that can actually do it. Wow. It was actually inspired by a snowboarding trick. Getting it to work as a skateboard on a skateboard is one of my proudest achievements. I actually wrote a thing about it. A poem? Sort of. It's like a way of expressing what the stunt meant to me and the feeling I get when I do it through rhythm. So, like a poem. Yeah, I guess. Can I read it? Uh, okay. But don't tell anyone, okay? Of course. Well, let's get you that beer now. Um, here you go. Oh, yeah. Actually, psych. What, did you forget? You have to prove you're worthy to drink this homemade brew. This will be fun, don't worry. Here at the lake, there is a rule and only one single rule. Everyone who wishes to drink the ale of Brandon's mom must prove their worthiness. I'm throwing out the gauntlet. My challenge to you, Stella. And to you, Taylor and Day. You all have to prove you are worthy. Really, Robert? This again? Come on, Jess. This will be fun. It's a nice way for everyone to get to know each other. What exactly is this challenge? I want to know. What is the worst thing you have ever done? Your stories shall be judged by me, Sir Robert of the Rail, and my fellow knight, Sir Brandon of Greenleaf. What's going on, man? Who's doing what now? Okay, just be then. Your prize, if I deem your story worthy, is that you will be welcomed into the order of the Knights of the Lake, and that your cupeth will overfloweth with the sweet nectar of Brandon's mom's homebrewed beer. Oh yeah! And by cupeth, I mean you got to drink from the bottle. Regrettably, we have no cupeths. The worst thing we've ever done. Uh, it's probably pretty obvious, but just in case you didn't already guess, I hadn't done anything bad or wrong since I flushed my dad's wallet down the toilet when I was three. Man, we got options, yo. <laughs> Prepare for rain. Seriously, does anyone else feel that? I think it's starting to rain, so, um, rain check on the story? Yeah, I think I'm good. I mean, beer is tempting, but... Taylor, my man! I know the beer is shitty. I'm working on it. But I think more important than the beer, than the physical beer, is what I am offering to you on the metaphysical plane, dude. Here in the sacred meeting grounds of the lake, as the great breakneck George Jorge bears witness to this meeting of the minds, I want to extend a claw of friendship to you. But I need you to meet me halfway. Share your darkest secrets with his humble rapturousness. So, I'll sweeten the pot. I'll tell you something I've never told a soul. Encourage, no pressure, no judgment. <clears throat> also, judgment is misspelled here. <laughs> judgment doesn't have an E in it. Taylor, no matter what you did, I promise I won't think differently of you. No judgment here! Yeah, there shouldn't be an E there. That E should not be there in the word judgment. Just throwing that out. 
He who is without sin be the first one stoned. Or whatever. Okay, I'll tell you. But I was pretty pissed off when I did this, so keep that in mind, I guess. Sometime last year, I... There was this construction company that came into Lidl, and they were... They just had no business doing what they were doing, so I snuck into the job site, and I... I drove a bulldozer through the foreman's office. Dude! It was at night, and I knew nobody was in there. Nobody was hurt, but I, but I get it. Seems kind of wild now. But at the time, I was just so angry. I don't even remember making the decision to do it. I just remember the feeling of righteousness when the portable office collapsed. Then, when it was over, I couldn't believe what I'd done. I just bolted. I don't think I've ever run that fast in my life. Somehow, I got away with it. They must have chalked it up to malfunctioning gear or something. And that's the worst thing I ever did. The end. Are you okay, Taylor? Yeah, I'm fine. Like I said, nobody got hurt. Right. Taylor! I don't think there is anybody, human, cryptid, dino, or great power on this earth, no god up in the sky, or fucking scientists in a lab, doing laser math equations, that could deny your worthiness. Taylor, thou art worthy! Um, thanks, I guess. Day, what about you? Um, I'm not sure if I really want to do this. Is it really embarrassing? Well, no. Actually, kinda, I guess? You guess? Well, okay. You guys remember that I used to do the morning announcements? Ha! Yeah! No offense, but they were kinda dorky. The ladle high good morning gab. Shut up, you guys. One day, well, okay, I was having a pretty shitty day, and I kinda let loose over the school PA system. I remember. You started the whole thing with welcome to another mediocre day at our dead-end school. Oh yeah! And you said something like, we're all doomed to haunt the halls of this crusty school until we die! Yeah, well, like I said, I was having a shitty day. Week. Year. Life. I still remember Vice Principal Jacobs banging on the door and trying to force it open. Wait, aren't the announcements done in his office? Yeah, I locked him out of his own office. Impressive! He didn't seem to think so. I ended up getting detention for like three months. Honestly, I'm surprised you weren't suspended. Or expelled. Me too, actually. They said something about it being my first offense or whatever. I'm pretty sure they didn't want to expel one of the school's, like, three honor students. I guess. But that's it. That's the worst thing I've ever done. I think I remember that day. Wasn't that the day that... Let's not get into that. Boo! <clears throat> ah! Hey, everybody. I'm pretty sure that right after school... What are you guys talking about? I think we were talking about... That I got a detention. Yeah. That's what we were talking about. Yep. Day. That announcement was legendary. There is no question, thou art definitely worthy. Oh yeah! Announce, <clears throat> announcement. Hey, let's move on to you, Stella. Um, 
How about we forget about Stella? Or how could we forget about Stella? Oh yeah! You lived in the city, right? Bet you have some hella wicked stories to tell. Uh... The truth is, I had never done anything bad in my entire life. But I didn't tell the truth that day. I wanted to fit in so bad that I made up a lie on the spot. I tried my hardest to come up with something really wild, but also cool and believable. One time, I got in trouble for doing something, and I got detention. Hmm. What happened? Breaking and entering, starting a fire, returning a late book. What? I started a fire in the classroom. You started a fire in the classroom? Yep, a, a big blazing fire right in the middle of the classroom. Why did you do that? I just really love a good fire. I try to start a fire wherever I can. What do you love so much about fires? I just wanted to liven up the drab gray classroom. Fires have such beautiful colors. You know, like yellow, orange, and red. So let me get this straight. You started a big fire in your classroom because you thought it needed some warmer colors? Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah, yeah neither do I. Oh boy. Stella. I cannot believe that this girl did that. That is absolutely a gloves off punch to the face. You're friggin' kidding, right? Kidding? Do you think this is a joke to be worthy? I can't believe you're doing this. I'm worthy? Oh, you are worthy. All right. I'm worthy. And as such, I dub thee Fang Shui. You are pretty goddamn worthy. Oh yeah, how does it feel? I'm worthy. You're worthy. I'm worthy. You're worthy. Woohoo! I am worthy. But now I want to tell you, I want to tell all of you the legend of the 20 gym socks. I have a confession. Last year, I didn't wash a single pair of gym socks. Not once. Would Raptor's feet sweat, though? I feel like sweat's more of a mammal thing, not a reptile thing. Uh, what? Ugh. I know. Gross, right? Ten pairs of socks, twenty single socks. Worn till they were so disgusting that I could bring tears to their eyes. But I went further. I took those disgusting socks and I packed them all into a Ziploc bag so they could stew in their juices. But that wasn't enough. Not for this raptor. I added an onion, a sardine, and a sprinkle of court, court, whatever that is, to that bag. And then I left it in the sun for 10 days. This bag was inflated from the stink that was fighting to get out. Oh, God. Why, you ask? What possible purpose could a dinosaur have for this bag of putrid stench? I'll tell you, the most worthy of all pursuits, of course, a prank. I hid all 20 socks in different locations in the, st in the school to further stew throughout the summer. You are sick. Sick like a fox, oh yeah. 
whenever any of you walk through the halls this year and catch a whiff of something so foul, you want to barf, you know who to blame. You have been pranked. The prank door strikes again. You're welcome. That's really something. Robert? Ah, thank you. I put one in the principal's mailbox. I put one in the boiler room. But the wildest hiding place was when I climbed up the flagpole and switched one out for the school flag. You climbed the 10 foot pole on the roof for a prank? Guilty as charged. Wow. Wild. Are you kidding? That is wild. I also think it's wild. I can't believe you did that. I know. Think of the principal's face when he... That's not what I meant, and you know it. Come on, Jess. Lighten up. How am I supposed to do that when you are doing something that thoughtless? It's like nothing I ever say gets through to you. Let's not do this right now. Yeah, I get it. Look, I'm going home now. <clears throat> Have fun with your new friends. I'm really glad that they all passed your test. Wow. <laughs> Talk about a buzzkill, man. It's all good, man. She's just messing around. Whatever, man. I'm going to take my leave, too. I guess I'll see you guys around. Are we still on for practice tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, should be. Should be. What time? I don't know, man. Afternoon, evening. Just run through our set without me. <laughs> I'll probably drop in sometime. You know how it is. Man. Uh, I guess. Okay. And seems this is a good place to hit the save button. Right there. Those voices are destroying my throat, but it's all good because this is... Raptor Boyfriend! <laughs> Coming out this week on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox. And I'll be continuing my playthrough on Friday. God... Ah, God have mercy on my vocal cords. Oh man, thanks to Nuru and Jesus for being here in the chat. Shout out to the Lurkers. Again, I'll be continuing my playthrough of this on Friday, so something to look forward to. Whew. This is awesome. I, I, this is a fun little game. <laughs> anyway, on behalf of East Asia Soft, I have been Skull. Have yourselves a great day and a great week, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye